Hi, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. This is a second session of Obedience Seminar. It's so wonderful to see you again, each one of you. And let's quickly review what we learned in the session one. We learned Father God's heart toward us is if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Whatever God Father prepared, all the blessings on this earth, He prepared for us, you brothers and sisters. And it shall be given to you as good of the land when you are willing and obedient. And we reviewed why we are hesitant. Number one, we are afraid to obey God because we are afraid if we obey Jesus Christ completely, He may ask us everything uh, just to give it to Jesus and we become like ruined or beggars. These are all devil's accusation, devil's discord, devil's strategy to make us afraid. And second reason we are often hesitant is because it doesn't make sense logically to us. So we shared many cases. I mean, Father God says very clearly that my thoughts are different from your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. I mean, he describes his thoughts are different from us. It's like heaven is different from the earth. We found that we have to fix our attitude toward the Father God, that Father God is beyond our understanding. So we accept whatever Father God reveals His thoughts and we change our thoughts to His thoughts and it's so easy to obey. And we receive the blessing of Father God and we will continue this session. So we learn that the good is the will of Father God for that particular person, for that particular case. So we have to obey to the will of the Father God at that particular time, at that particular case, as given to a particular person from Father God. Many years ago, when I was serving a church in the East Coast, of course I was working in a big company called General Electric as a director. And praise God, Father asked me to serve that church. That includes obeying to the senior pastor of the church. And I prayed a lot. Literally every day I prayed for the senior pastor. Just to share with you just one small instance. One night he came to visit us and he asked me, he was to talk to me alone quietly. And here was his story. He said, after I joined the church and started serving the church, he humbly saying that he realized so many things he didn't teach the church the congregation right. And now he got an offer to become the senior pastor of a different church in a different city. So he's wondering what is the will of Father God to take the job, to move to the church, or to stay. And he said he started reading books about how to find the will of God. And that book says, number one, is it according to the biblical principles or not? So that's guide number one. And this pastor says, serving the new church or this church is all according to the will of Father God. I mean, it's according to a biblical uh, principle. I, I'm, not, I'm not violating uh, any biblical principle. And second, the book says, according to him, that whether you have a peace in your mind or not. And he said he could not make any decisions and he does not have a peace either way. He's thinking about staying or rejecting that offer or he's thinking about taking that offer and become a pastor of the new church. In either case, he didn't have a peace. And third one, to find out the will of Father God, according to that book, he said, find the man who are filled with the Holy Spirit and ask him. So when he read that phrase, he, he said immediately he thought of me, praise God. So he said, that's why he came. So I told him, if I tell you what to do, will you obey? He said, yes. He said, I realize you are full of Holy Spirit, praise God. So whatever you tell me, I will obey. 
He's such a humble pastor. He's many years older than me, maybe even 20 years older than me or even more. But he, he was humbly trying to find that will of Father God. With a short prayer, I asked him, you want to move. Why? I mean, you want to take the new job as a pastor of a new church? He said, yeah, at the soul level in my heart, I want to start over because I ruined, I did not teach this congregation correctly. So I want to join the new church and I want to teach them right from the beginning. So again, with a prayer in Holy Spirit, I told him, no, you have to stay. You already spoiled this congregation. If a new pastor comes and try to discipline them, they will revolt against him and church will break. So you should dare not leave. You should stay. And since you have at least trust and relationship with the existing congregation, you have to fix them. After over 40 years, I can, I can tell you about this story. Praise God, this humble pastor, he said he will stay. And not only he changed so drastically, but he helped the whole church to change. Praise God. And God blessed him. Later, he became the presence of 1,000 Korean Baptist Church in the whole United States. Of course, he's retired now, so I can share this story. Brothers and sisters, this is how important to find that will of God and obey, not just follow according to how we feel, how we feel like doing. One of the challenge for us is to find that will of God and often, brothers and sisters, our spiritual leader will tell us what is the will of Father God. I'm not saying, pardon me, I'm not saying every pastor. No, there is a specific senior pastor or specific spiritual leader for each one of you. And through him, many times God reveals his will of God. One time I was a chairman of the finance in our church. Our church was a thriving uh, JMI, Grace Ministries International, under my mentor, David Kim, at that time. And people were growing like more than 1,500. And since our church committed to the mission, the 50% of our all church offering, you might say church income, automatically goes to the mission. So often we do not have enough money for the associate pastors and preachers and workers in the church. So as a chairman of a finance, my challenge was, I need to prepare, I mean, pray, so make sure to give them the salary that they, they deserve, they need to, to live with that family. So this was my challenge. So every Sunday service, when offering time comes, I just pray because as an engineer, I calculate says, God, we need $50,000 this week. God, make an offering. Let people touch, you know, touch the heart of the God and, and on and on. So you can see the environment. And praise God, for two years when I was in charge of finance, we never missed a salary. Praise God. In those periods, one big instant, big challenge came to me. Our pastor so committed for the mission. And for your information, GMI proved to be a church with the biggest mission in the whole world as a single church. You can compare with any American, Korean, any other church in the world. GMI, Grace Ministry International, founded by my mentor David Kim, achieved the biggest mission fruits in the world as a single church. All the glory to Father God. One day, so he was leaving for mission field, and apparently he told uh, the sermon uh, preacher who took him to the airport and the message through him was tell Elder Khan to send $20,000 to this particular church who is going to have a very special seminar for the teachers of handicapped people. So this preacher who just dropped my dear mentor David Kim at the airport, he came and told me, he says, oh, the pastor uh, Kim told you to, uh, told me to tell you that you have to send $20,000 to this church for this particular event. Man, my ego came up. And I said, he didn't tell me. He could have called me. He didn't tell me, number one. Number two, this is logic going on in my mind. This is not for the handicapped people. This is 
for the teachers of the handicapped people, they are a whole person. Probably they make enough living. Anyway, besides $20,000, I heard is half of that budget. Every year they invite the teachers from Korea and the US and train them how to serve handicapped. So that church is at the time, in terms of a number of congregations, is bigger than ours. And it's a yearly event. They must have a budget. Why should they send half of that budget to that church? <clears throat> you know, this came up in my mind. And thank God, I was trained to keep looking into the eyes of Jesus and listen to Holy Spirit. And I could see Jesus is frowning at me. So I cooled down and stop repenting, says, okay, I forgot to give thanks immediately. So I will give you thanks that even though he asked me, no, he didn't even tell me, but he sent a messenger, just send a $20,000, whatever. Then I could see a scene. The pastor came when, often he came back from mission field. He's very tired, but he was trying to convince this one elder to, uh, he, he took one hour to convince that elder to do something. I got furious. I said, why doesn't he just tell him to do that and go home and rest? Why the elder is so stubborn and let him just spend one hour to try to explain and explain and explain. The scene was showing me and I could see the heart of my mentor, David Kim. He trusts me so much. He doesn't have to convince me. He just have to order me. He just send a messenger and tell me what to do. And he expected me to obey. Wow. All of a sudden I could see, oh, he trusts me. He recognized me. I'm a, such an obedient and faithful staff of him. Then the Holy Spirit really started revealing to me, says, who is closer to Father God, you or David King? So I said, David King, he's, he's closer to you. That's why he's a senior pastor, and that's why he's my spiritual leader. Then the next logic, Father God, who surpasses all our understanding, Father God, who is beyond our understanding, that we can never understand fully. And my mentor, David King, who is closer to Father God, whom we cannot understand. So I cannot understand David Kim, why he does that. Immediately I could see, yes, I cannot understand. I should not demand to understand what my spiritual leader does because he is closer to Father God, whom we do not understand. Brothers and sisters, this is a very, very important aspect of obedience to the will of God in our daily lives, especially in our church life, especially in the body of Christ, especially in your faith life, everyone should have a spiritual leader. Whether he's a cell church leader, or an elder in your departments, or a pastor in your group, whoever, God is God of order. He puts someone with authority over us. Praise God. That's so wonderful. So I obeyed immediately, sent $20,000, then I start praying, God, we have a big gap. You need to send us more. So make sure as a chairman of the committee of finance that I could pay salary to almost like at that time, 70 people, including preachers, social pastors and workers. And praise God. God is so faithful. As I obey to the will of Father God, I obey will of my spiritual leader, he blessed our church, he blessed our department, and we did not miss single salary for two years. We were giving them out the salary twice a month. All the glory to Father God. Brothers and sisters, let's quickly dig in to our attitudes. Another attitude we have to really build up strong in our heart about Father God. Father God is love. Bible says, John chapter 10, verse 10, 
The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus is saying, I have come that they may have a life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus came to our lives and he chose us. He made us to sons and daughters of Father God so he can give us abundant life. I would like to really express this analogy. Many people, they think they have a really colorful life, like a color TV, when they do not believe in Jesus, they are not committed to Jesus Christ. And they are afraid because they think once they commit to Jesus Christ and go to church every Sunday or nowadays, you have to have a service through Zoom or through Internet. Many people feel like they are wasting time and it's like a black and white TV. But in reality, brothers and sisters, those who do not believe in Jesus Christ are slaves of the devil. They are really suffering. They don't have a true peace. Same extension. Even though we believe in Jesus Christ, that we are saved, so when we physically die, we will go to heaven. But if we do not obey to Jesus Christ in our daily lives, that moment that we do not obey, we became slave of the devil. That's what the Bible says. When we do not obey willingly to Jesus Christ, that means we already welcome the devil. The devil's thought, the devil's emotions. And Jesus is telling us very clearly why the devil came. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Brothers and sisters, I plead to you, we should never forget this aspect. When we are not willingly and obedient, we have already invited a thief. Thief who, who is going to steal and kill and destroy. The loving Father God, here's a, his promise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, But as it is written, Eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared those who love him. Father God is saying in many Bible verses, who is loving Father God? Who obeys Father God? Jesus says very clearly, if you obey my commandments, you love me. So Father God is saying, when you love me, I will bless you with such a blessing. You never heard, you never seen. You never thought about, brothers and sisters, that's our loving Father God. Father God gave us a command. Father God gave us the Bible verses, how we should obey. Why well, even some Bible, Father God tells us what to do, and we obey. Then he opens up the door. I can share with you the tons of testimonies not only mine, but so many of my brothers and sisters who simply obey simple command, like give things in everything, then they experience such a hidden, such a big, big blessing from Father God. Even though they obeyed Jesus in thanking Jesus, even though when situation was so bad, even though some bad thing happens, after they obey by thanking Jesus Christ, they experience hidden such a big, big blessing. I want to just uh, uh, share with you one uh, small testimony many years ago. After I started the company, my mentor, David Kim, he asked me to bring $30,000 per month to support this high school in St. Petersburg in early 1990. Praise God, I could do it about three years continually and in those periods, there was a one case I would like to share with you. Whenever I see money in my company account, more than $30,000, I didn't care. I brought quickly the $30,000 to church for my mentor David Kim could send to Russia to really raise up the godly leaders through that high school in St. Petersburg. So often we didn't have enough money to pay salary to our employees. In this particular case, 
we had about 20 employees and the balance in the company bank account was only three thousand dollars and i needed minimum thirty to fifty thousand dollars next week within a week to pay employees on time so my prayer goes with the faith father god as you promised seek your seek father's kingdom and his righteousness first first to seek his kingdom so i did i brought the money first to seek father's God, your kingdom then these shall be given to you so now father god is your turn father god is your turn now take care of our company praise god the holy spirit continually touched my heart and stay with the faith looking up to father god but here was challenge it was three thousand dollars then all of a sudden my mentor david kim called says tomorrow we have to go to visit this particular uh, nearby city of course it's by plane to meet the owner of some land that our church is interested in as a retreat center so i said okay I'll, you know i will take care of it meaning as an elder of the church uh, i cannot ask the church to give us money so i will take i will have to buy the ticket for my mentor david came and me and uh, probably it'll take you know, like $400. But before he was hanging up, all of a sudden he says, make sure let's take Deacon Kim also. Now, I was a chairman of building committee and I spoke English okay. But this Deacon Kim is assistant, assistant chairman of the building committee. He's an architect, but he didn't speak good English. I can tell you because you do not know who that person is. Anyway, and we are going to talk to the owner to negotiate the land price. Why, why do I need it? This was a thought going through in my mind. So when my pastor was saying, let's take a Deacon Kim or so, I didn't say yes, I didn't say no, and I hang up. Then my mind was, I forgot to give thanks immediately. And this is, man, my mentor does not know. We don't have much money in the company, you know. We have, we have only three thousand dollars, and I need like thirty to fifty thousand dollars next week. And he was to take a Deacon Kim with him, and of course, thank God I have to give thanks. In few seconds, I start repenting and give thanks. As then, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit kind of asked me, says, "So, if you go with uh, David Kim and you." How much money left? Uh, 2,600. Maybe we have to rent a car, so maybe 2,500. So if you take me and Deacon Kim also, how much money left? Well, uh, maybe 2,300. By that time, praise God, I could realize 2,500 or 2,300. That does not help our company next week. We need the thirty to fifty thousand dollars next week. I said, Mamma Mia, man, I was so stupid. I repent, Jesus. Oh, I repent. I will obey immediately. So I called my secretary, he says, buy a ticket for Deacon Kim and tell Deacon Kim to show up at the Los Angeles airport, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And when my mentor David Kim asked me, let's take a Deacon came, I said, eh, and I hung up. Trust me, my mentor, because he's a man of prayer, because he's such a man of a strong spiritual spirit, he knows what's going on in me. So I called him back. Because I hung up, says, eh, and I hung up. I didn't please him. So I called him, says, very joyfully, willingly, says, Oh, Pastor Kim, yeah, we bought a ticket for Deacon Kim, and uh, we told him that he will show up at the LA airport tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, and I was now telling him joyfully, willingly. And all he says, okay. I mean, that's all he said. He hardly gave any praises because he always taught me, your praise, your reward will come from Jesus, not from me. That was his attitude to me. So he never complimented me. It's okay. 
But I felt, yeah, I passed through the test. I didn't lose thankfulness. I obeyed my spiritual leader, even though I could not understand why he wants to take a deacon king. And make a long story short, we made a trip on Wednesday, and it came Friday, still no place I could not see, no money. And Friday afternoon, to make a long story short, after all our employees left, I was alone in my office, and that's when normally the devil comes. So to see these dark places in the whole office area, that's what your company will be next week. You don't have money, you are gonna close down, yep, 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 yep. I said, get out in the name of Jesus. And I start praising God, it says, give all the thanks to God. And I start singing hymns all by myself. Then the phone rang. And the man from Korea, whom I haven't never talked the last two years, he said he wants to meet me on Saturday. And he brought the man of some very fast growing Korean company. And he asked me to develop something for him. And I quoted him to develop what he wants, that special gadget, it will take $200,000. He said, no problem, please start as soon as possible. I said, we will not start unless you pay us half of the money first. He said, Hakuna Matata, no problem. He brought $100,000 Monday morning cash. So we deposited in, in the company bank. Praise God, all the glory to Father God. When we are willing and obedient, God prepares such a great blessing. And when we obey God, God interpret that, oh, you are loving me. So brothers and sisters, let me repeat again, the first Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those loving. God has prepared. I hope to see you in many other sessions or in different programs so I could share with you that when I was willing and obedient, God prepared the things which I have not seen, I have not heard, I have not thought of. That's Father God. We obey small things. I obeyed very small things to my spiritual leader because I accepted as the will of Father God through the spiritual leader, to take Deacon Kim on this trip, even though it didn't make sense to me. But Father God recognized me, oh, you love me. Then he prepared such blessings, and he never failed. He does again and again. Brothers and sisters, let us obey willingly even small things to Father God, and even small things to your spiritual leader, the God will bless you abundantly. Such a scale that, such a things that you never seen, you never heard of, you never thought of. I pray, brothers and sisters, you all enjoy such a great blessing from Father God by obeying to the will of Father God all the time. Let's pray. Thank our Heavenly Father God. Thank you for this so wonderful session that you show us, Father God, you are loving God. You have all the resources in the whole universe and yeah. you're waiting to pour out your blessing to those who love you. And when we obey you, when we obey to the will of you, Father God, you took that as we love you and you bless us so abundantly. Father God, we want to obey you. We want to glorify you. We want to Obey to will of you, Father God, whether it comes from you directly or whether it comes through the spiritual leader to glorify you and to enjoy such a super abundant blessing from you. So we can become blessing to the non-believers to glorify your name, to bring them to Christ. Help us, Holy Spirit, so that we are willing and obedient and we continue to enjoy the good of the land in Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, brothers and sisters. Congratulations. You made a second session. Uh, we will see you in third session. Let us go a little bit deeper. Ask Holy Spirit to make a powerful, willingly obedient son and daughter of God. We'll see you soon.